Quel message adressez-vous aux groupes occidentaux de défense des droits de l'homme et au président Obama La liberté d'expression de lesbiennes, gays, bisexuels et transgères. Respectez les sociétés africaines et leurs valeurs. Si vous n'êtes pas d'accord, gardez simplement calme, laisse-nous gérer notre société, là nous verrons si nous nous trompons. Nous le découvrirons par nous-mêmes. I'm tired of all these stories. These neo-colonial civil servants who have been holding us back, I have put my foot down, say I don't want to hear those stories. And Uganda is developing and it will develop because I don't entertain that nonsense anymore. Borrowing for what? Capacity building. Imagine seminars, they, they, they call you in a, in a hotel, You eat chapati, you eat mandazi. They say that is capacity building. Capacity building should be on the ground, not just seminars. Now, finally, the curse, which we told our people about in the 1960s, we told them, part of the wars we fought in Uganda, we had to get rid of the neo-colonial groups which were there, which were stopping us from thinking. We had to get rid of them by force. But one of the problems was Africa producing raw materials. Materiel primaire, they call it in Francais. Materiel primaire. Raw materials. Imagine coffee. The global value of coffee is $460 billion. All the coffee producing countries of the world, Brazil, us, all this, we only get $25 billion of that. Out of the $460 billion, after, uh, the, the, the coffee producing countries get $25 billion. And Africa gets only 2.5 billion. 900 million of that comes to Uganda because Uganda produces a lot of coffee. A country like, like uh, Germany, which has no coffee, earns $65 billion dollars from coffee. So, this, this, I sell a kilo of coffee Good grade coffee, $2.5. Somebody in London would get $241 from that one kilo. Okay, there are, there are other costs on the way. I don't want, I don't want to, because he has, he's, the, he's the owner of a restaurant and so on. But coffee roasting, coffee roasting, coffee grinding, Coffee packing must happen here in Africa, must happen at source. The shirt I'm putting on is Ugandan cotton. I don't put on foreign clothes. It's only the trousers I'm putting on because I can't go naked. Because they have not solved that problem for me. So, if you look at, co at, at cotton, How many job levels are there? Job levels. You grow the cotton. Okay, that, that one we do. Those, those jobs we do. We gin, gin the cotton. Kto and begu, remove the seeds. That one we do here. And we end there. When you hear all these countries which have got crisis, Burkina Faso, I don't know what, Mali, all of them are co cotton growing countries. But how much textiles are they producing? They are importing textiles, I don't know from where. So now if you end at level two, 
ginning, removing the seeds. Then you take the palm, you take the cotton to clever people. People are clever. What when you are kiddy? Wako huko. Sisi hapo tutajiita vipi? Kama mtu anakuzidi akili wewe unasema unasema wewe nani? So they take the, the cotton, they spin, spinning more money, more jobs for their children. They weave more money, more jobs for their children. They put the, the print, more money, more jobs for their children. The, I, I, I looked at uh, the figures. Uganda consumes 276 million meters of textiles each year. And that wonderful country of yours spends 880 million dollars on, on clothes. Some of them are dead people's clothes from Europe. When people die, the, their clothes they are sent to, to you people, to Africa. And we spend 800, all the money we earn from coffee goes back to bring dead people's clothes. But for we have got one factory there called, called Nitil. It, 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 it produces 25 million liters, uh, million meters. So in order to clothe our people in Uganda without importing, we need about 11 factories, like the one of Nitil. And they would, uh, they would employ about 20,000 people. So there, and we would save $880 million, which we are just giving to other people. So, this Aida, what did you say about the modern slavery of the Africans of producing raw materials? In one of our documents in, in, in Addis Ababa, we had talked of Africa producing what it does not consume and consuming what it does not produce. They, they had put that uh, as a summary in, in one of the documents of the African Union. We must get rid of the production of raw. I banned the export of minerals from Uganda and process I banned them. Pick a marfuku. Then the agents were going in the corridors, what, Mufanyi, no mineral will come from Uganda if it's not processed. You wait until I, 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 I go away, you can steal the minerals, but not now. I banned this export of unprocessed minerals in 2012. My, my young brother, his excellency Ruto, I forgave him and gave him some, some little iron ore for, I think, two or three years. Because I've got a lot of iron ore, one of the best in the world. I told him, uh, His Excellency Ruto's man, Muindi, Muindi Wahapa, Kenya, you come and build the steel factory in Uganda at, 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 the, at the iron ore. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've, already, I've already built in Mombasa. So I said, okay, because of my young friend, I give you some iron ore for two, I think two or three years, but come and put the factory here. Now you can imagine Akiri Yawatuenu, my civil servants. An Indian wanted to take that iron ore to India, imagine. Iron ore in, in our language is called obtare, but it is, it is uh, soil, soil, black soil, if you see it, it is soil. To take that to India and do what? Pay your wonderful people $47 per ton. Our iron ore is the purest in the world. 
it is 70% pure. So you need like one and a half tons to make a ton of steel. Now, a ton of steel costs $700. Somebody gives you $47 on your, on your, on your wealth, the wealth of, 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 of your people, and he gets $700 from it. And all the jobs, your children have no, have no jobs, I, I can't be part of that treachery. So I banned there will be no export of unprocessed minerals from Uganda. So there's no business. What do you mean there's no business? So when I banned them, oh, they are flocking in now. They have opened seven gold refineries. Seven gold refineries. They are there. Because I banned. Uh -huh. The other day I was opening a tin, a tin re refinery. You can imagine this tin, and uh, the, the Suru Samia may know where we were, the power station. Both sides, the Uganda side and the Tanzanian side. That is all tin, tin. But all this time, imagine since the, the British were here, they were taking uh, stones because tin in nature is a stone looks like a stone so they take that and they give my people $11 per kilo and they take it to, to cleverer people for the cleverer people they get $32 what, what, my people got 11 those people get $32. And all the jobs. So when I was opening the factory, I was asking the, the, the refinery, I was asking them, this boy who, who opened the refinery is a Canadian. I was asking them, Uyum Canada, Amerita Umemewake, has this Canadian brought his own electricity? No. Anatomia, umeme wa kwetu. Aha. Ameleta maji yake ya factory? No. Anatomia maji yetu. Internet, anatomia ya nani ya kwetu? The, so, out of the 32 dollars, much of, of that money will remain in Uganda. Pay for the raw material, pay for the electricity, pay for the water, all that remains in Uganda. So, what does, first of all, my African brothers and sisters say about this hemorrhage of Africa? Hemorrhage. We call it in Uganda. This hemorrhage must stop. The crisis you see in these countries is because of stagnation of the last 60 years since independence. The population is increasing, the economies are not increasing. What do you expect? So with these few words, your excellencies, what do I say? Masibuku.